Hello. Uh, so we're going to end this lightning talk session, I guess, with some more JavaScript. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a bit um, kind of about what's the uh, recent developments in terms of language itself and uh, some new features that we might be uh, we might look forward to coming in. Um, so hello again. My name is Branislav. I'm a software developer here in Oslo. I mostly work in uh, front end, some back end sprinkled in. I work in a data integration platform company called Sesam. I really like React. I like learning about programming language theory. And I like working on developer tooling. And uh, some of my hobbies are reading, hiking, cooking, and listening to way too many podcasts. Um, so let's start. First, I want to define some terms. Um, I guess you all know JavaScript, but uh, there's uh, also something called ECMAScript which is actually the JavaScript specification document that uh, kind of summarizes and provides a clean specification for what JavaScript technically is. Now ECMAScript, uh, the name ECMAScript comes from the organization ECMA, which is a uh, European standards organization that resides in uh, Geneva, Switzerland. Um, uh, right, let me just turn on my timer because I forgot. Um, so uh, the various JavaScript implementations, be it browser engines, Node, the Babel compiler, they all conform mostly to the ECMAScript specification. The group of people that are uh, responsible for this specification is called the Technical Committee 39, the TC39. They meet every two months. Um, they comprise of uh, members of various organizations and companies that operate in the web space, Google, Mozilla, Microsoft. Um, and they prepare yearly releases of, uh, of the ECMAScript standard. Um, everything is open on GitHub, the agendas for their meetings, notes from their meetings, all the proposals and uh, discussions around these proposals are on their uh, GitHub organization, TC39, so I encourage uh, everyone who's interested in programming languages to, to check it out. Now, TC39 has a very well-defined process with which proposals uh, can come and uh, change the, the language. Uh, the TC39 process basically defines five stages uh, through which pro pro proposals can go through. Anyone can uh, propose some kind of a language addition. Uh, the TC39 then uh, sit, sit down and talk about, uh, talk about it and either outright refuse it or let it advance to further stages. As it goes through these stages, uh, there's various uh, discussions, um, clarifications, uh, first implementations um, are provided. Um, and if a proposal um, is a part of uh, stage four, it means it's finished, there's no more changes to it. And at that point, it will become a part of the next year's uh, specification release. Um, when once a proposal is in stage four, it means that um, there's at least two competing implementations uh, in the wild. There's lots of experience using this feature. Uh, and therefore, you can often find that there's the many of these features you kind of already use uh, in, your, in your daily life. They're still not in the actual specification of ECMAScript. Um, with that said, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's uh, coming in kind of this year's spec, which is ES 2019. This uh, was finalized in January and um, the official release, so to say, is in the summer. So next year we'll get uh, ES 2020, which is kind of already in, uh, new, new features are already in the process of being added to that one. Um, first of all, I think we all, on our daily lives in JavaScript, often kind of work both with objects and arrays, and we also want to often transform data between the two. And I think uh, a lot of us use, or at least I really like to use the method object.entries, which uh, is very helpful for iterating over objects because it gives you kind of an array of arrays of the keys and the values uh, that are present in this object. And coming in ES 2019, uh, we have kind of the inverse operation, which is object.fromEntries, which uh, turns in an array of arrays into basically an object where the first elements are the keys and the second elements are uh, the values. Um, yes. Uh, another thing that comes uh, in ES2019 is, some, is a very pretty simple utility function called flat, which uh, works on arrays. And um, depending on, uh, it takes in one argument, which is uh, the 
the level of uh, nesting you want to flatten in an array. Without an argument, it uh, basically does the level one flattening. Uh, I think this is very helpful as well. It's a very handy feature. Nothing really that you can't kind of uh, implement on your own. But uh, I think especially in ES2019, there's a few of these uh, methods that are just helpful syntactic sugar uh, uh, to help basically help us. Um, a, a complementary function to that is something called flat map, uh, which does both a map operation and a subsequent flattening on an array. You can see the difference between a flat map and a regular uh, map function. Um, this method is actually kind of a, a specialized version of a very core functional programming function called bind. Uh, so if you want to, if you're interested in that kind of things, you can look it up and see what the connection is there. By the way, you might be wondering why the, the function flat is called flat and not flatten, which would maybe be more, more consistent with the rest of JavaScript method names. There's a big history with, with the naming of this method. Um, I just uh, recommend you to Google the term smoosh gate, and uh, you'll find more about that. Um, right. Those were some of the things which are already finalized, and they're coming in uh, kind of uh, the this year specification. Uh, now, as I said, the TC39 meets every two months, and there was a meeting just uh, a few weeks ago, one or two weeks ago, so I thought I would give you a bit of uh, the most recent news regarding these proposals that uh, come from uh, this meeting. First of all, um, so these will be things which are potentially coming in next year. Uh, first of all, dynamic imports uh, are in stage four, they're finalized, they will be in the spec next year. We probably, all of us probably use them a lot already, but like I said, once you're in stage four, it means there's already two different implementations in the wild, there's lots of experience using these features, and so not now, only now are they getting into the actual spec. Another thing is top-level await, which means using the await uh, syntax outside of async functions. That one was, was advanced to stage three, so now you will start seeing some uh, implementations happen in the wild because the spec itself, the semantics and syntax, has been finalized. A uh, very exciting thing, I think, for everyone is that uh, these two complementary features called optional chaining and knowledge coalescing has been, have been uh, moved to stage two. Uh, we often find ourselves uh, dealing with ne deeply nested objects, and there are properties which may or may not exist. Um, and with this operator, we can greatly reduce the amount of boilerplate code that we uh, have to use to, to be able to avoid uh, having type errors in our code. The complementary uh, proposal to optional chaining is something called nullish coalescing, which uh, you can see are these two question marks at the end uh, that help with uh, when the logical or operator returns false, which let's say if uh, the value is zero, uh, this basically uh, only works on nulls and defines. Uh, I would like to end on some uh, maybe future proposals that I'm, I'm very excited about as a functional programming fan, but they are in stage one and they are not finalized. And I don't, uh, you, can, you can go and play around with them, but they're uh, far from being implemented and far from being finalized. The first one is pattern matching expressions, which if you worked with maybe OCaml or F Sharp or Scala or these types of functional languages, you might know, uh, which is basically sort of a, you can think of it as a switch expression, but it's a bit more powerful than that. Um, there's a bit of a discussion whether this proposal actually kind of belongs in a language like JavaScript, which is not statically typed, and I think there's some performance um, issues that were can come with this sort of uh, language feature. Again, C stage one, not finalized at all. Uh, and the second one is the pipeline operator, which is also in stage one, uh, which is basically a better way to compose functions uh, kind of more in a functional way again. Uh, this one actually has two competing uh, proposals. Uh, one that's, that kind of matches uh, the F-sharp semantics of the pipeline operator, and one that's something called the smart um, pipeline operator. Um, there are lots of discussions around this right now because um, there's a question about how this behaves with async functions and lots of other uh, kind of edge cases. 
Uh, so to, to finalize, I'm going to give you some, just some tips. It's really fun to try these new feature, features. There are often variable plugins for these. Uh, but I will implore you to be careful using them ever in production code, because even proposals in stage three can still change or can be refused at the end. Uh, always check compatibility tables. There are lots of them on the web. It's easy to Google uh, to check kind of your target uh, JavaScript engines if they support them. And if they don't, if you still want to use them uh, and you use something like a Babel transpiler, keep an eye on uh, the bundle size that your transpilation will produce, the performance implications it has. And uh, the same thing goes with uh, any polyfills uh, you might use. Check the documentation, try it on the Babel, REPL, uh, check benchmarks. And lastly, this is a really fun area, from, at least for me, to play with. Uh, everything is on GitHub, like I said. There's all various discussions on, um, around these proposals on esdiscuss.com, I think. Uh, and it's really fun to, to go through these. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much.